alone day alone day alone day alone day alone day alone day cinnamon you ought to be praying cinnamon you ought to be praying oh cinnamon you ought to be praying before that day before that day, 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 before that day. That was Cinnamon. I need a song. I don't know. I have one more song. Somebody said, I don't really got a book. Amazing. Just a quick recap before we resume. It's like Netflix. Before we hop back into the next episode. Um, I sing. Two songs, one with blood, the other was my cover of Cinnamon, and it's leading us into this last song, which is a song that is very near and dear to my spirit, because I am a PK kid, does anyone know what that means? Well, I guess it's just a PK, because the K sound stands for kid. Are y'all familiar with that term? Mm -hmm. No. Would you like to share what that means? It's a kid. Mm. <laughs> 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 how you said it was, it's a pastor's kid. Like, yeah. it had all of this context around. But yes, it's because it also comes with a lot of context. Like, pastor kids are this or that or whatever. But I am one. And this song is one that I sing in church. Um, church was my first stage. And that's my family. So yeah. Um, this is Lillian and Valley. There's a little in the valley And it's bright as the morning star I tell you there's a little in the valley And it's bright as the morning star I tell you there's a little in the valley and it's bright as the morning star. Amen. 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 Somebody found joy. They found it in the valley. Found it to be bright as the morning star. Somebody found joy in the valley and it was bright as the morning star somebody found joy in the valley and it's bright as the morning star amen mm, amen mm, amen I found hope, I found it in the valley, found it to be bright as the morning star. I said I found hope in the valley, and it was bright as the morning star. I said I found hope in the valley. It was bright as the morning star Singing amen, love, amen mm, Amen So yeah, that's the name of that That's my jams And that song, um, I was saying, is kind of a landscape for my journey with life in general, but also blackness um, And yeah that's kind of the thing we're rolling with. Typically, we begin by looking at the cover art. And I just want to get some general feelings. We also have the real life paintings here. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, and on the inside cover, when you open it up, you'll see the titles as well as the dates in which they were produced and the materials. So that can also inform any interpretations that you have. Anything that sticks out to you, I'd like to hear it. It could be a color, it could be the way the strokes are, it can be anything. Anything, no wrong answers. Awesome. So go ahead and open the book up to your table of contents. It's the first page. And 
you'll see that this is in two parts. We have gutter and we have water. Hence the name of the event, Enter the Gutter. Here we are, in the throes of it, feeling the feelings, thinking the thoughts. Um, and yeah, gutter represents the muck of it, the valley. It represents the things and the experiences and the parts of us even, right? Because a lot of times we look outside and be like, that sucks. It's, uh, and that's, again, in relation to blackness, right? Um, so much of what I now define as blackness is very internal. And I feel like a lot of what the world is doing right now is being like, this is that, and this is that. And if you're not this, then you're not that. And I'm like, I actually have a very interesting relationship to blackness. And I'm sure every black person does have a different relationship to blackness, as, as does every queer person, as does, you know, the list goes on and on. But we have these very defined spaces. And I think it's trying to change that we're in that weird space where we don't know what's happening yet, right? It's literally like embarking on a new frontier of identity. Um, and it's interesting to watch, but it's also like, where do you fit in? as a person or as a being while watching this? Like, what is your point of reference? Um, so this is my point of reference. We're about to hop on in. So we'll start off with handouts. Now, I think it's handy to, <laughs> it's handy, handouts. <laughs> it's handy to point out that I wrote this in 2016. So this, like the songs that I just sang, would be kind of a journey through how I see blackness and how a lot of people, I keep saying I because my own experience is the clearest that I have, but there's a lot of other references. Like if you look at Malcolm X, like his journey went very similarly as far as the relation to blackness and going from this is a personal problem to this is an institutional problem. And sometimes it could be both. But <laughs> Do we have any volunteers to read handouts? I'll read because I have a copy of it. Oh, amazing. I love it. Okay. Handouts. They call our reparations handouts. Well, that's fitting. Our hands were out when we were picking their cotton. Our hands were out when we were cutting their cane. Our hands were out harvesting their indigo. Our hands were out creating their inheritance. Our seats were out nourishing their wives, children, and the basket they raped us for, but didn't claim our bodies were out. Oil and sold on auction blocks, our bodies were out, swinging in the breeze, charred hanging from poplar trees. I'm sure a black hand was out, looking for something to cling to. When they bombed Tulsa, black hands were in praise. Before they bombed the church in Montgomery, killing those four black girls, Black hands were up in praise. Before that white devil emptied a barrel in a black church in Charleston, black hands are up in the air, pleading, don't shoot. Black bodies are bleeding out on the concrete, laid down by boys sporting red, white, and blue. American terrorism persists on American soil to exterminate the black bill, but we are still here. With our hands out holding receipts because it's time to collect the debt. Payment is overdue, America, you owe us. Freedom, 40 acres and a mule, but you won't give us what you owe us. You'd rather we take it from you, and we will with interest. Nice. Thoughts? Yeah, I Have to be the one to like commit these acts of love to help free their oppressors. 
And I would like, and I still am, I'm having such a hard time wrapping my mind around some of that fully, especially with like the acts of love for oppressors, because like most of our existence in this country, especially, have been like literally doing as like you're saying, like feeding their children, doing X, Y, and Z for them, pretending to like love them in order to save our lives. How am I supposed to now try to wrap my mind around to get out of my oppression? I must also like oppress you, especially as like black women and stuff, because like you've conditioned us to think that you're so great and so holy and so whatever the fuck. And now you're telling me, well, now you, to even get you to stop hurting me, I have to love you so much. When, when am I going to be able to give that to myself if you can't even hand, put your hand out to give me anything? I'm still the one who still has to reach to do all of this. Um, you just made me think of that, yeah. Yeah, that's really, really poignant, I think, because there's so many ways to get to a point of belief, you know? And for some people, that is their mission, you know? That is exactly what you should be doing. You go the Christ way, okay? Yeah, Forgive no. them, they know not what they do. You do that, you know? That may not be everybody's cup of tea, and I think it's important that we have all sorts of facets. Um, I went to a beautiful reading yesterday, and they were getting at the exact same concept, um, because a lot of people are trying to reimagine these features. So, Similarly to what I was saying about this new frontier we're on, trying to figure out what can the world look like, what can we do with it, like what's going on, and that feels really overwhelming. But they brought up a really good point that, like, really like, oh, let me exhale, and that was if everyone is good and cares about their circle, right? Who won't? These are people right now. One, two, three, four. These are the people that I'm touching right now. I'm gonna do my darndest to be genuine and honest and just really share this human experience and be kind and all the things that I can to maybe add some light into you and maybe you'll add some light into me. Um, and if we just continue leading our lives that way, then everyone will be touched. It's kind of like each one teach one situation. You know, it's like you don't have to love and take over the whole world and everything and all of that, you know? It's like the people that you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, like how are you dealing with those situations? How are you dealing with the white person at work? Just being a little weird. And granted, you it's not also not your job to deal with it. You know, it's different jobs for different folks. Some people, they feel like, oh, let me explain. I learned all these things. Let me tell you about all the things that I learned. I'm good for you. That's not me necessarily, you know? Yeah. And that, I think you need all of those people in the imagining of whatever this new world will be. Because, yeah, some of the people need their hands held, the whites. Um, <laughs> the oppressors yeah. need their hands held. <laughs> and even, yeah, the conversation just gets so wide um, when you begin panning all the way out, which is why I think if you're thinking about making an impact and what you can do, it's good to zoom in quite a bit. Um, but if you do want to pan out, then you end up talking about things like wealth and like the different kinds of black experiences mm -hmm. and then like whiteness just feels like a thing on the, out, on the outside that like it's like we got shit that we got to deal with on the inside and y'all out here trying to get like it's so much going on so if you just really focus and of course this is me preaching to myself if you just really focus on what you can do um, then you're doing good I think but boom when we get to, so I was angry when I wrote this. I was real angry. This was around the time, um, 2016. So Trayvon uh, Killer, his killer, um, had just gotten off. And I was like, oh, the world is trash. Like, I was in college at this time. And before then, a lot of what was known on the news to me, to my knowledge at least, um, was like very historical, very like local kind of, that was the first thing that felt like Emmett Till. Like I was just like, what year? I'm very confused. Um, but as we know, that kind of thing happens all the time. It was continuing happening through those years, through my lifetime. But for me, it became relevant in that moment because I was aware and I just voted and all of these things. And I'm like, none of this means anything. The world sucks. Hence this phone, right? <laughs> so I was like, come on, man. Like, is was this not enough? You know? And it's not for, if we, we can refer back to the painting, it's not because people are hungry and they don't know how to fill that hunger. I'm going to keep referring to this reading probably. Um, a quick A. 
Quick A is the name of the author. They're amazing. So many novels. Look them up. Great. Um, but they were getting at this hunger that people have, and I'm so interested in that hunger too, where if you haven't been taught that you don't have to be hungry, or that like your hunger is, or you being fed is depending on someone else's hunger, then that's all you know, you know? Like, I'll use my own words now. Often I like to think, and the thing that got me out of this mindset, even though we haven't moved toward it yet, um, because this was just making me angry and probably gonna shorten my life sentence. Because I wasn't necessarily doing anything. But some, the poems were beautiful, that's great. But as far as like my soul and how I was dealing with these things, it didn't feel good for me. So what I ended up having to process it as is, what would I do if I was beamed into a white body? <laughs> what would happen? What, like, what does that experience looks like? To be, because even if I had the pure, because I think I'm pure hearted, I think I would try to be the best that I could, you know? I'm like, I still would kind of be the oppressor, and like, you, that's a hand to be dealt. Like, being the oppressor and being the oppressed is two sides of a shitty coin. It's like, fuck, this sucks. Like, we need each other for this situation to keep happening. Um, which brings us, it's funny, we're all only on the first poem, but I'm trying, here we are. Um, which brings us to the concept of blackness. Um, blackness only exists in response to whiteness, right? Like, whiteness only exists in response to black. Like, these two things exist because of each other. If you go to Africa, people are Ghanaian and Nigerian and have tribes even within that, Igbo, right? Like, it's not just we are all black. <laughs> this is, it's not that. And I think here we have, and I'm African American, so like, my. Um, parents are from Virginia. My mother picked tobacco. Um, sharecropping, we think that is very far removed. It is not. My grandparents were sharecroppers. Um, and we just moved up. So, like, literally, you could say I'm first generation North, right? So, we're the first people who are in the North. Um, so, yeah, having that experience, it's a bit different than anyone else's experience, I imagine, right? Than someone who is. African American, right? Someone from Nigeria who comes to Americanism, first, uh, first uh, generation American in that way. It's really fascinating because where I think we can open the lines all the way up, and then I think it makes sense to close them all the way, if that makes sense. So when we open the lines all the way up, you are black if you came from Africa. The African diaspora is wide and full black people all over the world and are often the most oppressed all over the world. Go to India, the people they look like, and they always hide us. Why are they always hide us? <laughs> okay, anyways. But you can widen it out to that degree, and this is just how I'm saying I'm processing my blackness, because it's a lot. Um, so I widen it up to that degree where you are black. I can see you as black. You, you think you black? You black. It's not a, not a Rachel Dolezal situation. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So you got like, oh. <laughs> exactly. there's, there's still a line. Um, and then there's my own black experience, right? Because even something I had realized, there's a movie called Passing. Are you guys familiar with Passing? It was a new movie. Yes. I don't know about it. I, I, don't, I haven't seen it, but mm -hmm. I saw what it was about. <laughs> no, I read the, the book. Oh, you like, read the book? Yeah, yeah. Even better. You want to tell us about yeah. um, yeah. it? It's, it's really interesting. They have like a lot of books kind of like like in that same like thing um, of like a black person gets to pass away and like what they do with that like mm -hmm. magical like passing ability. Like, you know, yeah. well, because like there was like the white world is different. Like, I don't know. Like, they're on something else, right? And then there was, it was in the movie, like, yeah, but white people are fucking crazy, like, every time. Um, for this one, it was, like, these two women, one of them passed just, like, a little bit more than the other, so, like, she, like, really fell into her white life and was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm white, like, I think it's, it's a, a movie. movie. Yeah. Oh, it's a movie. Yeah, and she's just like, yeah, I'm white, like, it yeah. just left out, you know, little bit, just like that. And the other woman was, like, always afraid that she'd get caught, like, you know, in her, like, I don't know, her white trials, like, I don't know, like, so, it, it was interesting, I think it's always so funny because of one, like, I think it's part of, like, the centering of whiteness that, like, happens, like, like, subconsciously, like, we don't realize it, but, like, 
you are always kind of being like, ah, oh, like like you said, like putting whiteness against like blackness and stuff like that, or just being like, oh, this is the the way that like we've known to exist in this country, and, like in this like social setting kind of thing. So it like happens constantly without you trying, and like trying to imagine something different is like so hard, but it's also like the most radical thing, and like the most fun half the time because you can really just be like, oh, we don't have to do any of the conventions that like make you upset, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's, like you said, it's so radical to go there with it. But yeah, in passing, speaking about, like, again, different black experiences, it's like, that ain't my experience. <laughs> like, that a thousand percent has not been my experience. And there are just so many experiences within blackness, and especially when you look into the arts, like, I feel like, it's okay, it's fine, but a lot of the black people <laughs> in the arts spaces that I be like looking their backgrounds up, a lot of them are from backgrounds where it's like, I grew up in a pretty middle class neighborhood and they, we were pretty well to do and I grew up around the whites and I didn't feel like I fit in with the whites but then I visit my cousins back at home and my cousins back at home, they were like super duper black and they said I wasn't black and I don't know what's going on. So a lot of the times when you see any portrayals of outside and then you got like boys in the hood, it's like everything feels very drastic to me as someone who has had experiences that transverse kind of all of these areas of existence. It's like, I live in Brownsville. I have lived in Brownsville my whole life. My family is from the South. We are super duper Christian. I love the hood. I love my family. But like, you get me, like, all of these things are, like, really beautiful. Um, but the way that they're portrayed sometimes can be a little jarring or even mimic. It's like you're making a mockery. Um, but it's only because they don't know. So it's like, we talk to you as the black person because you're black fitting the larger black mm -hmm. umbrella that I was talking yeah. about, but you don't have every black experience. Yeah, so you 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 think of it as a mockery kind of thing. If you're not from that side, you have no, nothing to connect mm -hmm. this experience to. You yeah. know, like, you don't feel what I feel when I say it to a black person. You're not gonna feel that way. You're gonna feel however you're gonna feel. You know, however that is. <laughs> right, and that's the thing. There's so many feelings. There's so many ways to feel and interpretations and all of that. And I just think there should be such a wider space for all of it to, to exist. And that's why I, I have conversations like this, and I think they're so important. Because online, it seems like these conversations are just getting more polarizing. Like, the whole black-white contrast thing is, like, online. Bam get further and further away from each other, like really just getting in. And I think it's important to have like these just in-person, real-life conversations. Like, how are you? Like, what is your human experience looking like? But we've been chatting about the first phone for a long time, and <laughs> we can go ahead <laughs> and move to the second, unless somebody has like a burning testimony to the, <laughs> to the phone. so that I could suckle the sweet nectars from her breast, mouth watering and back and I lashed on to two savory drops plucked on my lips, a splash of the tongue exciting the buds. There were two drops before. She withdrew and named me selfish. I selfish, having toiled so long, we even battered along the way, and all I asked for is a drink. But how could she know of my thirst? How could I know of her aching uterus? I would have sucked her dry. I just, I really like this because, you know, like, you didn't end at, like, you know, she named me selfish. You didn't end there. You, because, like, not often that everybody is thinking about both sides. How could I know of her aching others? How could she know of my thirst? But it's like, just to even put that in there, it's just, it's, it's, un, it's an unspoken, just common courtesy that no one has nowadays. So, I really like that. Yeah. 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 Ye
and it's a little sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Like trash. I was having this conversation. 
we're gonna move on to the phone. But real quick, um, I was having this conversation with my beautiful niece, Aubrey. Um, she's nine. And we were walking around, doo -doo -doo, and I told her to look at the moon, because the moon was all looking nice. We had a full moon on the 16th. And she was like, oh yeah, that's cool. And then she was like, where is the sky? The sky's not infinite, right? And I was like, hmm. I guess it kind of is. It depends on who you ask. Uh, in one way it is. Uh, and then I explain this whole thing to her because I do. Um, I'm like, depending on which point that you look in the universe, it's constantly expanding. So think of a Google map. Wherever <laughs> you are in the universe, it just looks like it's constantly growing out, growing out, growing out. So technically, literally, there's no limit. It's just infinite. It's just space and space and space. And she was like, yeah, but like the sky, like there's like stratospheres. And I was like, oh, yeah, like stratospheres and stuff. So if you're talking about that, then yeah. But again, those are varying levels of sky, if you want to think of it that way. And even further, in having this conversation, I was like, we're walking in the sky want to think that much, that far and she was like you blew my mind <laughs> and I was like I kind of blew my mind too and she was like you know what else blew my mind matter when I learned that everything is made out of matter I was like how could people be so violent and cruel it's you and I was like think oh. about it people are really mean to themselves mm -hmm. and she was like yeah that is true <laughs> she had a moment like people are mean to themselves. And I'm like, yeah. And I think that pans out everywhere. Like the relationship that we are having with ourselves is literally just a projection of what's happening in the world and vice versa. It's like, pew, 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 pew. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that tidbit. It makes me so happy about the see. Okay, last one from this section is mosquitoes. And this one I wrote in 2020, so you'll see that's about like a three year span from the rest of these poems, yeah. Um, that's on page 19. So let's see where I landed after a few years. I do we have any volunteers for this one? I can read it. <laughs> Thank you. They like the blood in my right eyelid, my night sweats, triggered by shifting hormones. Lure them in through the window. They follow the scent mixed with my breath and find an exposed bicep as an appetizer. While I am elsewhere far away in my dream, they insert their nose, mouth, straws to steal AB positive blood. Meanwhile, my reality in the dream begins to crumble. Images of rashes and burning sensations crash into the scene. Mosquitoes give me nightmares and hives. So I turn on the fan and cover myself head to toe. I try not to convince myself I am safe. I am not. Mosquitoes like the blood in my right eyelid and I lift that bit out. I wake to a swollen eye second time this summer. I hope that the winter foils their plot. I hope that they are stopped before they suck my eyes shut, before they steal my dreams. Vicious mosquitoes. <laughs> Any lines that stick out? Words? I like the imagery of the mosquito sucking your dreams through your eye. Like, I think that's like scary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, that's scary. But it's also like, I don't know, for me it's like that idea and like thoughts of like sharing dreams in any kind of way um, and the thought that someone could take your dreams from you and not like your dreams are like your aspirational goals but just like your dreams like in a lot of ways I think those are super personal because like they just come from your mind like they're just made up of like every single memory and experience that you ever had so someone taking that is like fucked up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, and I'm so happy that you said that and pointed that out. Unless somebody else has something to say. I do. You do? Okay, hold on, I'll down. Go ahead. <laughs> it just seems very vulnerable, you know? It just, 
it seems like these mosquitoes or whatever, like just life, you know, stuff gets you at like, you know, when your eyes are closed or when you're not paying attention or like just when you're not aware of things sometimes, things could just, cause you just left that one eye out. Cause you just did that one thing, swipe, you know? So it's just, it's just a reminder of how like just cautious you have to be sometimes in, in being vulnerable. Cause you know, you just, you just out here just being a big piece of meat, you know, <laughs> just walking around. You just all you just vulnerable. You just all who you are, you know, and just being who you are sometimes. Like, you know, a lot of the times I, I let go a lot of me to people sometimes. And it's like, whoa, reel it in, reel it in, reel it in. But my eyes were closed the entire time because I trusted my gut or whatever was happening or the conversation. Or I'm just, you know, I'm just feeling just floating and feeling. And the next thing you know, my dream just sucked right out of my eyes. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful interpretation. Mm -hmm. um, my first note, I also wrote a note about what you just said. My first note was the sucking the dreams out of the eyes. Um, and that dream being in such a personal space, right? The all right, y'all, get ready for where I'm about to go. Okay, let's see. Um, <laughs> the dreams being in such a personal space, again, relating this back to race relations, um, because this is a BSF event. Um, I always think about, and I had a whole poem about this, it literally is called The Enslaved Tongue or something like that, and it's about how we speak English. They have literally, like, it's mind control. If you don't have a word for something, then it doesn't exist. Like, it's very hard to fathom something that you can't name mm -hmm. or put down. Um, so in that way, those dreams have been tap danced on already or like fiddled with in certain ways. And I think now we're in this period of unlearning, like creating these spaces where we can fully love on ourselves and see what world exists within us. Um, outside of that space. But that's something that I think about often. It's like, we speak English. <laughs> like, that was very effective. And then, like, of course, you could go even further than that. I say we speak English just because that's so current. Um, but of course, if you go further back than that, like the stripping of religion and all culture, right? Like, and that's what makes our experience so very unique. Um, as Black Americans, it's the stripping or the attempt. And that's the thing, it was the attempt to strip so much of the culture and the fact that we were able to retain and like make beautiful like things from the scraps mm -hmm. and to keep the threads and make new quotes. Dope. But yeah, and then just being who you are. You said something about just being who you are, right? And I think that's also another thing with blackness that's just like a doozy. It's like yes, everybody has like problems and like their own like terrible experiences and the world treats them a certain way. You were probably bullied because you were fat. I was too, it's okay. And like you were probably like made fun of because like you couldn't spell that good. The teacher asked you to spell something out loud. You spelled it wrong. That's fine. <laughs> like, you know, like those sort of experiences can harm you and like completely change like how you perceive the world. But something about being black when the world sees you as black, it's outside of those spaces a little bit because you can't cover it up. I can't pretend that I know something that I may not know, or I can't pretend to act the way or be it. Way Kanye, I know people feel the way about Kanye, but Kanye said, even if you're in the bins, you're still a nigga in a group. And that line is very poignant because you can't wash this off. And it's because of the white black thing. Like money, you, you can fake money all day long. You can fake wealth. You, you can be like, hey, I got it. And people won't know you don't got it until they know you don't got it. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but yeah, this is different. And I don't think it's, I just think it's things to think about. You know, I, I don't think it's anything to try to fix or find an answer to you. It's a journey of finding multiple answers. You'd be like, well, here's the problem. Okay, 
got over that hurdle, what's the next one? Okay, it's gonna be hurdle after hurdle, but if you just keep your eyes on the one in front of you, I think that's ideal. That's why I had to zoom in. You heard me, I was over here like, and then in Charleston, and then, and then, and then, I did it. This, this whole book and more, I promise you, would it could have been all of that. And it's real, it's so very real, and you need people doing that work, but I think it's important to know what your job is. <laughs> What is your job? All right. And we get to move into some lighter stuff now. Out of the gutter we come. We're going into water, the second part of this. Um, and we'll start off. Oh, that's cute. We'll start off with one of my favorite books, Mole People. And that's on page 21. And. We have any volunteers for mole people? Well, actually, I'm gonna read mole people because I really like mole people. <laughs> I'm gonna read mole people. Um, yeah, I'll we'll work on there. <clears throat> mole people. At its end, betwixt the calm and chaos, the world flung itself into a black hole. Stuck in time, moving so fast, it became still. Turned on its axis, reversing and shifting, the nations devoured themselves. The leftovers were just crumbs, spewed out like watermelon seeds. The ground sucked them up. The dirt gnawed at their skin with soft gums. All they know now is darkness and soil. But it is warm, and the dirt loves them. You don't have to, it's fine. I have to, it's because I have things to say, so it's fine. <laughs> um, Mole People, this is my favorite poem. Um, it's one of my most recent.